हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज शीला रत्न बंसोडे फ्रॉम वॉलचंद इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी सोलापुर टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू सी द टॉपिक फ्री हैंड स्केच पार्ट थ्री एंड इन दैट वी विल बी लुकिंग इनटू पाइप जॉइंट्स मूविंग फर्दर द लर्निंग आउटकम्स स्टूडेंट्स विल बी एबल टू डिस्क्राइब डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ पाइप जॉइंट्स नाउ आई सजेस्ट यू टू पॉज द वीडियो एट दिस मोमेंट and recollect the different pipe joints that you have seen up till now in day to day life moving further pipe joints are basically used for carrying fluids from one place to another as we all know the pipes are made in standard lengths beyond that standard length we do not get the pipes so to have the desired length we join the two pipes by different joining components so pipes can be joined together to obtain the desired length the type of joint that is required to join two pipes depends on the material of the pipe and the purpose of the use why you are using that particular pipe and the material of the pipe depending upon that we select the type of joint the material of pipe is based on nature of fluid that flows through the pipe so uh, whether it is in gaseous form or total liquid form then the pressure of the that fluid whether the fluid is to be supplied through very high pressure or whether the fluid is to be supplied through a low pressure or a moderate pressure depending upon that material of the pipe depends the temperature of the fluid whether you want to pass hot fluid or whether you want to pass cold fluid depending upon that material is selected and most importantly the chemical properties of that particular fluid the chemical properties plays a major role for hampering the material of the pipe so these are the conditions these are the criteria that is pressure temperature chemical properties that you need to take into consideration before selecting the material of pipe and nowadays as you all know we are we are mostly using pvc pipes widely that is polyvinyl chloride pipes moving further the first pipe joint that you can see on the screen is cast iron pipe joint in cast iron pipe joints the flanges are an integral part of the pipe this flange this flange is an integral part of the pipe the ends of the pipe themselves are shaped into flanges and in between these two flanges there is a cushioning material made up of rubber or any desired material to prevent leakage <clears throat> and these two pipes with the help of these two flanges are joined by nut and bolt arrangement over this circumference so this is cast iron pipes then we have copper pipe joints in copper pipe joints the flanges are not an integral part of the pipe so this is the pipe this is the pipe and this is the flange the pipe and the flange are joined together with the help of brazing pipe and uh, flange are joined together with the help of brazing similarly another pipe and flange joint is taken together and joined with the help of nut and bolt arrangement so this was with copper pipe joints copper pipe joints are you can see in automobiles then we have wrought iron and steel pipe joints there we have two types of joints one which you can see on the left hand side of the screen where the pipe joint the flange is an integral part of the pipe the end of the pipe is shaped into a flange this is possible or the flange and the pipe are joined together by threads so you can see internal threads cutted on the flange and external threads cutted on the pipe so flange and pipe are joined together by uh, threaded portion by threads similarly another pair and the two are connected with the help of nut and bolt arrangement so this was with wrought iron and steel pipe joints then we have spigot and socket joint as far as spigot and socket joint is concerned here you can see this part is called as socket <coughs> and this part is called as spigot the spigot is inserted into the socket in this fashion as you can see on the screen this type of joint is used where you want to have the underground uh, piping or where pressure will be applied in later later part of the time so that the joint should not break 
the pipes should align themselves with easily without breaking the joint there we go for spigot and socket joint this spigot is free to move inside this socket and then once the spigot is inserted into the socket this portion is filled with the desired filling material and after a due course of time this joint gets adjusted to the contour of the underground pattern so this is the orthographic view of the spigot and socket joint then we have flange joints flange joints are used where you want to transfer fluid with high pressure the end of the pipe is formed into flange the end of the pipe is formed into flange but it is in elliptical form it's not a circular flange as we have seen earlier this is an elliptical flange elliptical form flange and the two pipes are connected with the help of uh, these uh, flanges using nut and bolt arrangement as you can see on screen the dimensions that you can see on screen are only indicative dimensions exactly uh, the same dimensions may not be used everywhere the size of this joint depends upon the pipes that are being connected and the application where it is being used the as uh, discussed earlier the pressure of the fluid if the pressure of the fluid uh, to be transferred is very high the size also increases as compared to other types of joints this type of joint is preferred when you want to transfer high pressurized fluid so here you can see in the side view the exact shape of the flange which is in elliptical fashion then we have union joint union joint is the most commonly used joint most universally used joint this type of joint is preferred when the pipe length is too long and when you cannot rotate the pipes to form a joint that time we use the union joint the union joint comes into three parts this is the first part that you can see on screen which has external threads then this is the third part uh, sorry second part and this is the third part so first part second part and the third part this part is connected to <clears throat> one side of pipe with the help of threads the second part is connected to another pipe uh, along with this cover part so this is the cover part the two pipes are brought closer and this cover part that is part c is rotated in the threads formed on this part 1 with the help of this cover part the two pipes are joined together with the help of union joints wherever you cannot rotate the pipes you have some limitations of the place or the pipe length is too long there we use union joints union joints are most universally used joints for different types of pipes now we have different pipe fittings what are the different pipe fittings that are commonly used the first one you can see on screen is the socket joint socket joint where the socket is a small pipe which has internal threads and the pipes have external threads the two pipes are connected with the help of this socket internal and external threads are being formed together then we have nipple joint over here similar to the socket joint nipple joint also is a pipe uh, piece of pipe but with external threads in socket joints the uh, joint has internal threads whereas in nipple joint there are internal th external threads and the pipes to be joined have internal threads so these are two joined with the help of this nipple joint then we have bend you can see this so this is the bend this is the elbow and this is the t when you want to turn the pipeline in 90 degrees you go for bend or elbow some the change in direction of the pipe we go for elbow or bend then we have t joint where you want to transfer the fluid in two pipes which are coming together in 90 degrees here also you can join the pipes first pipe here second pipe and here third pipe so three directions 
so this will be the inlet and this will be the two outlets then we have reducing socket here to join two different uh, sizes of pipes and then we have plug plug is to close the open end of the pipe this will be either internal threaded or external threaded so this was with the pipe fittings these are the references thank you